the tafsir of surah tabbat this is also known as surah al masad chapter 111 which was revealed in mecca bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of allah the most gracious the most merciful tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab sayasla naran dhata lahab wa maratuhu hamalat al hatab fi jidha hablun min masad translation perish the two hands of abu lahab and perish he his wealth and his children will not benefit him he will enter a fire full of flames and his wife too who carries wood in her neck is a twisted rope of masad al quran chapter 111 verses 1 to 5 the first topic is the reason for the revelation of the surah and the arrogance of abu lahab towards the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam al bukhari recorded from ibn abbas that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went out to the valley of al batha and he ascended the mountain then he cried out o people come at once so the quraish gathered around him then he said if i told you all that the enemy was going to attack you in the morning or in the evening would you all believe me they replied yes then he said verily i am a warner sent to you all before the coming of a severe torment then abu lahab said have you gathered us for this may you perish thus allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed perish the two hands of abu lahab and perish he to the end of the surah in another narration it states that he stood up dusting off his hands and said perish you for the rest of this day have you gathered us for this then allah revealed perish the two hands of abu lahab and perish he the first part is a supplication against him and the second is information about him this man abu lahab was one of the uncles of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his name was abdul uzza bin abdul muttalib his surname was abu utaybah and he was only called abu lahab because of the brightness of his face he used to often cause harm to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he hated and scorned him and his religion imam ahmad recorded from abu azinad that a man called rabia bin abad from the tribe of bani adil who was a man of pre-islamic ignorance who accepted islam said to him I saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the time of pre-Islamic ignorance in the market of Dhul Majaz and he was saying O oh people say there is no god worthy of worship except Allah and you will be successful The people were gathered around him and behind him there was a man with a bright face squint or cross eyes and two braids in his hair he was saying Verily he is an apostate from a religion and a liar. This man was following him that is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam around wherever he went. So I asked who was he and they the people said this is his uncle Abu Lahab. Ahmad also recorded this narration from Suraj who reported it from Ibn Abu Az-Zinad who reported it from his father Abu Zinad who mentioned this same narration. However In this report Abu Zinad said I said to Rabia were you a child at that time he replied no by Allah that day I was most intelligent and I was the strongest blower of the flute for music Ahmad was alone in recording this hadith concerning Allah's statement his wealth and his children kasab will not benefit him Ibn Abbas and others have said and his children kasab will not benefit him means kasab means his children a similar statement has been reported from aisha mujahid ata al hasan and ibn sirin it has been mentioned from ibn mas'ud that when the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called his people to faith abu lahab said 
Even if what my nephew says is true, I will ransom myself, that is, save myself from the painful torment on the day of judgment with my wealth and my children. Thus Allah revealed, his wealth and his children will not benefit him. Then Allah says, he will enter a fire full of flames, meaning it has flames, evil and severe in burning. The next topic is the destiny of Umm Jamil, the wife of Abu Lahab. Allah says in the Holy Quran, and his wife too, who carries wood. His wife was among the leading women of the Quraysh, and she was known as Umm Jamil. Her name was Arwa bin Taharb bin Umayyah, and she was a sister of Abu Sufyan. She was supportive of her husband in his disbelief, rejection, and obstinacy. Therefore, she will be helping to administer his punishment in the fire of hell on the day of judgment. Thus Allah says, Who carries wood, in her neck is a twisted rope of masad, meaning she will carry the firewood and throw it upon her husband to increase that which he is in, that is of torment, and she will be ready and prepared to do so. In her neck is a twisted rope of masad. Mujahid and Urwa both said, from the palm fiber of the fire. Al-Awfi narrated from Ibn Abbas, Atiyah al-Jadali, al-Dahak and Ibn Zaid that she used to place thorns in the path of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Jawhari said, Al-Masad refers to fibers. It is also a rope made from fibers of palm leaves. It is also made from the skins of camels or their furs. It is said in Arabic, Masad thul habla and ammasaduhu masadan when you tightly fasten its twine. Mujahid said, In her neck is a twisted rope of masad. This means a collar of iron. Don't you see that the Arabs call a pulley cable a masad? The next topic is a story of Abu Lahab's wife harming the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ibn Abi Hatim said that his father and Abu Zurah both said that Abdullah bin Al-Zubair Al-Humaydi told them that Sufyan informed them that Al-Walid bin Kathir related from Ibn Tadrus who reported that Asma bin Abi Bakr said when perish the two hands of Abu Lahab and perish he was revealed the one-eyed Umm Jamil bin Harb came out wailing and she had a stone in her hand. She was saying, He criticizes our father and his religion is our scorn. And his command is to disobey us. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting in the masjid of the Kaaba. And Abu Bakr was with him. When Abu Bakr saw her, he said, O oh Messenger of Allah, she is coming. And I fear that she will see you. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Verily, she will not see me. Then he recited some of the Qur'an as a protection for himself. This is as Allah says, And when you recite the Qur'an, we put between you and those who believe, not in the hereafter, an invisible veil. Al-Qur'an, chapter 17, verse 45. So she advanced until she was standing in front of Abu Bakr, and she did not see the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She then said, O oh Abu Bakr, Verily, I have been informed that your friend is making defamatory poetry about me. Abu Bakr replied, Nay, but the Lord of this house, that is the Kaaba, is not defaming you. So she turned away saying, Indeed the Quraysh know that I am the daughter of the leader. Al-Walid, or another person said in a different version of this hadith. So Umm Jamil stumbled over her waist gown while she was making circuits, that is tawaf around the house that is the Kaaba and she said cursed be the reviler then Umm Hakim bin Abdul Muttalib said I am a chaste woman so I will not speak abusively as I am refined so I do not know both of us are children of the same uncle and after all the Quraysh know best this is the end of the tafsir of this surah and all praise and blessings are due to Allah